to Shred Guitar in the 80s. Today I thought it'd be a lot of fun to talk about just an incredible year for guitar um, and hard rock, heavy metal, and fusion. Um, the year was 1986. It was just a, an amazing year. The whole neoclassical movement took off post Deng Bay with all sorts of amazing players. Uh, practically every hard rock band at the time had a, a really great guitar player. I mean, Great guitar playing was everywhere. It was on the radio and movies. And you couldn't help being overwhelmed by an incredible solo at any given moment. Um, there were so many great albums released that year. 1986 might have been the pinnacle um, of hard rock and heavy metal in terms of groundbreaking guitar playing. So I thought it'd be a lot of fun to show some of my favorite albums from the year 1986. So let's get started. The first album I picked was Racer X Second Heat. Um, I was a huge fan of the first one, Street Lethal, so when I heard Second Heat, I was just blown away because there were two of them. You know, you had Paul Gilbert, the mainstay of the band, and then one of his students, Bruce Boyer, was asked to join the band, and they were doing all these incredible harmony stuff. The tones were killer, just a crank-sounding Marshall, a nice overdrive with the reverb. The cool thing is in their solos, they played all sorts of cool intervals. Um, I really love the interval use and the phrasing, and it's kind of a perfect marriage between like early Van Halen and Ingve Malmsteen and Judas Priest, kind of. It's what I always thought Racer X to be. Um, just a great band and a great album. It has a classic Scarified, which has just become a standard of the Shred era. Um, I mean, all you have to do is go on YouTube and you'll hear some five year old girl playing it mind blowingly well. Um, it really is just a, a mainstay of Shred Guitar now. Um, they do a cool Bowie cover. They do a Judas Priest cover, um, Heart of a Lion, which is actually, I think, was an unreleased Judas Priest song at the time. They got the classic Motor Man with the core arpeggios at the beginning and Hammer Away. Um, the cool ballad, Sunlit Nights. Just a great album with a great tone. Like I said, really innovative solos, harmony solos, great vocals. A really great album. Um, just if you haven't listened to it in a while, but I'm sure a lot of you are Racer X fans if you watch my channel. I really love it. I love the cover too. The next album is Dancing Undercover by Rat, the follow-up to The Amazing Invasion of Your Privacy. And I really love this album. Warren's style changed considerably on this album. He went a lot more bluesy um, with really cool phrasing. And some of the solos kind of remind me of the Dick Wagner, Steve Hunter solo on the Aerosmith song, Train kept the rolling. Um, those two players actually played on a studio version. It wasn't Joe Perry and Brad Whitford. But some of the lines, I can definitely hear that influence. And, and Warren would go on to talk about those two players as being an influence. And he didn't actually know that those were the two players on that song. But you can hear some of those lines in, in these songs kind of mixed with that Van Halen-y kind of feel. Um, the tones on this are just unbelievable. Him and Robin kind of mesh so well together. Um, it has some great songs. I love the song Dance. I love One Good Lover. <laughs> great track. You got Drive Me Crazy, a really driving song. Um, Slip of the Lips, another great track with a great riff. I really like that one a lot. And Body Talk, one of my favorite rat songs of all time. of other great songs looking for love i love seventh avenue it's got a great groove take a chance just a great album and a really great follow-up to invasion of your privacy um i really like this album uh, 
it's a it has a really great mood to it. It's a great rock record and it sounds amazing. The next album is Visual Lies by Lizzie Borden. And this album flew under the radar for a lot of people, including me. I didn't hear it till much later. Um, and when I did, I was blown away. I was like, how did I miss this album? Um, the guitar solos are just stellar. And it's Gene Allen and Joe Holmes who were going to play with Ozzy. Um, and the solos are just chock full of high-tech guitar playing. They could easily be right at home on Shrapnel Records. The two players are just amazing. Um, I really love this, their tone. They got great picking chops, arpeggios, tapping, phrasing, um, that cool quintessential LA kind of guitar sound. Really flew under the radar. This The hit off this album was Me Against the World. That was kind of the MTV song, but it really wasn't indicative of the solos on the rest of the album. But I really like that song though. And the songs are catchy and it's great quintessential LA mid 80s kind of hard rock. So. Lizzie Borden, if you haven't heard this, Visualize, I definitely recommend checking it out. The next album up is The Amazing Trilogy by Yngwie. Um, just a classic of the genre, one of the neoclassical classics, and a fan favorite of, of most Yngwie fans. Love this album. Um, the songwriting on it's really concise. The solos were just super memorable and melodic, with just amazing phrasing. And the production on this was a lot drier than some of the stuff that he would do after. Um, just so many great songs. You don't remember. I'll never forget. The Trilogy Suite, just an amazing song. I love Dark Ages. I love that dark kind of sound it's got. Magic Mirror is a really cool jam. Very neoclassical chord progression. You got the cool fire, kind of a Van Halen, almost unchained kind of chord thing at the beginning. You got Crying, one of my favorite instrumentals from Yngwie. I love when that electric guitar comes in. It's just amazing. You got Queen in Love. Just Liar, one of my favorite songs, I actually did a little lesson on it. I can't say enough about this one and this is one that really stands out from Yngwie's discography. I think um, if you're an Yngwie fan, you're definitely a fan of Trilogy. Plus it has a cool album cover on top of it. One of the best Yngwie album covers. The next album up is one of my favorites of that year by far. And it's the amazing Chastain, Ruler of the Wasteland. And if you watch this channel, you know I'm a David T. Chastain fan. I just love his songs and approach and his style. I love that kind of sinister harmonic minor sound he uses in Chastain. He actually put out three albums that year. Um, he did CJSS, World Gone Mad, and he also did CJSS, Praise the Loud, which both those are available on the Dive Bomb Records label um, right now is a really cool kind of reissue. So if you are a fan of David T. Chastain or power metal or neoclassical metal from that era, I you have to have all the Chastain stuff, it's brilliant. Another album that I love by one of my favorite bands from that era is Iron Maiden Somewhere in Time. And this album was really moody and it had a kind of a different production for Martin Birch. Um, Martin usually is pretty dry and straightforward. This is a very wet album, very atmospheric. And I think that this is probably Adrian Smith's best album in terms of his solo playing. He really dominates this album. Adrian just plays amazing on it, um, as does Dave. I mean, they both do, but man, some of the solos that Adrian plays on this are just right there with Michael Shanker in terms of melodicism and phrasing. Just brilliant stuff. You got the amazing Caught Somewhere in Time, Wasted Years, just a great song, the great lyric. Actually, Ryan Adams did a cover of it. You can really hear the quality of the lyrics and the mood of the song from Ryan's cover. Just a great track. Sea of Madness, Heaven Can Wait. Um, just so many great songs and this album is very like I said very moody and very wet has a, a totally unique atmosphere for Iron Maiden um, it's a lot different than the earlier stuff but one of my favorites I love the stage you can see on the back of this reissue from that era I saw the band on three tours before that but I didn't see them on this one I wish I would have um, I really like, love this album a lot I love the solos the songs the vocals it's a classic of the genre Iron Maiden can't go wrong the next one up, I played a lot. I played this album a lot, and I don't really hear too much about it. It's White Tiger with Mark St. John, who actually played in Kiss prior. Um, he got together with the vocalist Dave Donato, I think was his name, and 
he was actually a singer that tried out for Black Sabbath. Um, they did some demos, but he didn't quite make it. And I can kind of see why. Dave's a great singer, but I can't hear him in Black Sabbath. But in the context of this band, he does awesome. Um, I really like the songs in this. And Mark St. John just rips on this album. I mean, he plays so fast, it's hard to even hear. But uh, I really love his playing, especially with Kiss. Um, I thought he played some great solos. And I really like the songs on this. And I listened to this a lot when it came out. Um, he's kind of got a unique tone on it. Uh, he thanks Alan Holdsworth on this album for get, helping him get a sound. But it doesn't really sound anything like Alan Holdsworth. Um, very aggressive, very kind of L.A. rock for the time. Um, just a really fun album with some great guitar playing. The production could be a little better, though. It's hard to hear some of Mark's playing um, with the production. But I still, it still holds up, and I still enjoy it. White Tiger, Mark St. John. The next album is from Dio, and it's an EP, actually, and it's called Intermission. Um, just a great cassette. I played this thing like crazy, this cassette here. Um, they do live versions of King of Rock and Roll, Rainbow in the Dark, Sacred Heart, um, Rock and Roll Children with a cool medley, and We Rock. And then they have a studio track with Craig Goldie called Time to Burn, which I really love. It has a really nice solo, some nice interval things. And from my understanding, I don't know if this is true or not, but I guess that Craig Goldie went back in and did all the rhythm guitar work on this album because there were some tuning problems. And from my understanding, what you're hearing on this live album is not actually Vivian Campbell playing the rhythm guitars. Now, I could be wrong, but I remember reading that back in the day or a little after. Um, but it's a great listen, and Vivian's solo playing is just amazing. I, I love the aggressiveness and melodicism that kind of supercharged blues rock kind of thing, you know, that Gary Moore thing, the great tone, and, and Craig's solo is great on Time to Burn also. I played this like crazy. So that's the end of part one. Now, the great albums of 1986, guitar albums in 1986. I'm going to be doing part two next. Um, but uh, in the meantime, go ahead and check out some of these albums and, uh, and break out your guitar and relive 1986. Um, the next episode, I'm gonna, I got Holdsworth and McAlpine and Vinnie Moore and more Chastain. Um, it's going to be a fun one. It's going to be more of a shred kind of thing. But uh, mad that this one wasn't, you know, yet Chastain in there and Ingbe. But um, until next time. Thanks a lot for listening and hanging out with me. I hope you enjoyed this. I have a blast just talking about my favorite music. So not just doing the lessons, but just I love commentating on that era and, and all the great music I grew up loving. So thanks a lot for liking and subscribing if you have. And until next time, have fun picking.